Welcome to Word Connect with Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, a teaching ministry where believers are trained to be established in the truth of God's Word. For more information and free downloads, please visit www.thepastormax.ng. All right, so I just for those of you who are really interested in studying further, the first man to start interpreting John chapter 10 as 10, uh, John 10:10 10, 10 as Satan. Is called Theophlact of Oshrid. Theophlact of Oshrid. And he did a Sunday school curriculum in 1800. He was the first person who started interpreting it like that. And then pastors and preachers picked it up and began to teach it. So go to Hosea chapter 4. Are you there? Say amen if you're there. Say amen if you're there. Okay, Hosea chapter 4. Say amen if you are going there. All right. Hosea chapter 4. I, I, are you there now? I want us to read it because I'm still trying to establish this. It's important that truths are established in God's word. And like I said, don't take my word for it. Go study the scriptures. If you find it true, accept it. Look at this. Uh, I, of course, let me say this now. Okay, let's go to verse 1, Hosea chapter 4. You know the popular scripture, right? Where we're going to, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. But I want you to go to see how that pours out. So let's go to... Verse 1, listen to the word of the Lord, O sons of Israel, for the Lord has a case against the inhabitants of the land, because there is no faithfulness or kindness or knowledge of God in the land. Observe that, knowledge of God in the land. Because Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, one of the primary responsibilities of the minister is to teach you, is to equip you with knowledge. Praise God. Now, there is swearing, deception, murder, stealing, and adultery. They employ violence so that bloodshed follows bloodshed. Therefore, the land mourns, and everyone who lives in it languishes, along with the beasts of the field and the beds of the sky, and also the fish of the sea disappear. Verse 4, yet let no one find fault, and let none offer reproof. For your people are like those who contend with the priest. Observe, observe the conversation, observe the conversation. So you will stumble by day, and the prophet will also stumble with you by night and I'll destroy your mother. Verse 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Pause there. Who is supposed to give this knowledge? The priest. Does this tally with what we read in John chapter 10, verse 10? Of the thief coming to steal, to kill, and to do what? To destroy. So the, the, the proof destruction is caused by the lack of knowledge. Now, Two ways. Destruction is caused either by the lack of knowledge or the abundance of wrong knowledge. So two things you find is either the priests are not teaching you the right knowledge or they are giving you the abundance of wrong knowledge. So somebody will come. When you're eating the dream, you have eaten your destiny. I told you of a lady who came around. She said, Pastor, you said, she came to the office. So I gave her water to drink. She thought I wanted to pray on the water. So, <laughs> at the end, she said, what a prayer. I said, no, no, no. When people finish eating, they drink water. <laughs> I gave her a couple of messages to listen to. She listened to her and she was free. Somebody said, don't you believe in deliverance? I absolutely do. But one of the things I believe about deliverance, like Jesus, is that you preach deliverance to the captive. Preach, preach, preach deliverance to the captive. What does it mean to preach deliverance to the captive? Proclaim to them that Christ has paid the price. You don't need to be in bondage anymore. Proclaim deliverance to the captive. And when it's a stubborn spirit, cast it out with a word. Don't make the whole church go through drama over deliverance. Is that okay? So, people are disturbed for lack of knowledge. Because you rejected knowledge, I will also reject you from being my priest. So, what was he referring to? He was referring to the priest. Go and listen to our study on Hosea, and you'll find that. Okay, so where do we go from here now? Uh, there are two other areas where Satan is used a lot, and it's brought a bit of confusion. So let me clarify that. I just like, let me see where I can stop. Let me. There are two. There's one when he talks about the wiles of the devil. Ephesians chapter six verse eleven. Let's deal with that. It's shorter. If I have time, I'll go to the other one. 
So what are we doing? Basically, before we actually get into the series, we're trying to identify the enemy, right? Because right now, if we can identify him, then we can be able to defeat him. Listen, we already know that all power in heaven and earth belongs to God, so we can cast him out. But if, if we don't understand the tricks that the enemy uses, then he will overpower us. Are we together? Okay, so let's go to Ephesians 6. Please get our message on the whole armor of God. I've thought about that. I've even explained what principalities and powers mean. Because, <laughs> let me not even go there to push us to another angle. Go and find out how many times the word principality and powers is used in scripture and who it was used for. Ephesians 6, 11. Okay, Ephesians 6, 11, right. It says, put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. The schemes of the devil. The schemes. Observe that word, schemes. So he wasn't referring to the devil there as somebody with power, but someone with deception. Who schemes? Is that okay? All right. Uh, let's see here now. She's thinking. The word there is in the King James is used as was, right? If you put up the King James, you'll, use the, you'll see the word was, right? Now, the idea here, God is saying, listen, the devil has schemes. Remember, I'm trying to just prove one point. There's no power with the devil. He has schemes. The word schemes there is nekel in the Greek, N-E-K-E-L. Nekel in the Greek. Sorry, nekel is Hebrew. Then methodia in Greek. Methodia is more like from the word methodology, methods. Right. Why nekel is the Hebrew word. Now, it's used only like two times in scriptures. So, for us to be able to understand what it's saying here, let's go to another place where it is used. If we, if we can see it in the context of how it is used in, in the book of Numbers, we can find out how it is used here in Ephesians. So let's go to Numbers 25. Numbers 25, verse 18. Are you, are you, are you still here? Say amen if you're here. All right, this is good. Numbers 25, verse 18. Numbers 25, verse 18. All right. So, actually, he was talking about, it's a long, long reading, but we should have read everything. But I was talking about, let's go to verse 18. Uh, let's start from verse 16. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Be hostile to the Midianites and strike them, for they have been hostile to you with their tricks. With their tricks, with which they have deceived you in the affair of poor. That word tricks and deceive is the same word used, is the same Greek and Hebrew word used as scheme. In fact, if you go to the King James Version, the word there is beguile. Use, use the King James Version for me. Exactly. For, for they vex you with their wiles. So you, you observe this word wiles here, right? It's the same word used as wiles in Ephesians 6. Now, how does the wiles the wiles work? <laughs> Wherewith they have beguiled you in the matter of poor. Now, remember, we're going to go there, but it's towards the end of the message. Remember, the word beguiled is the same word that Paul uses for Eve. That Satan beguiled Eve. That same word. Now, if you take that word beguiled, go back to the New American Standard Bible. Go back to the New American Standard Bible. So you find the word was and beguiled there. So whilst there is tricks, if you replace the word. Can you guys underline there? If you can underline, you, you can. But if you, if you look at the word whilst, it's replaced with what? Come on, talk to me, church. It's replaced with what? Tricks. So what does it mean if we take this and put it back into Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11? It says, put on the whole armor of God that you are able to stand the tricks of the devil. So the devil is trickery. trickery. If he was powerful, he would just kill you. But he doesn't have the power. So what did he do to Eve? Simple. This is summary of my message. How does the devil overcome a Christian? He misinterprets scriptures to the Christian. So what did he do to Eve? 
misinterpreted what God said to Eve. Bam! And killed him. That's it. Tricks with which they deceived you in the affair. That's it. A man has a good home, good wife. His eyes will not stay in one place. He goes and sleeps with somebody outside. Starts committing adultery. Opens a door for the enemy to come in. And later he says, ah, it's the devil. There's no temptation. And it's very easy. I've told, I mean, I was explaining to someone today when we were coming to church. If you are here, you are a man. And you want to sleep with a girl. You are ready to sleep with a girl. You are ready. And you just see a credible doctor send you a text. That girl has an incurable disease that you can get through sex. What's going to happen to you? Everything standing will fall. You will run away. So what made you to overcome that temptation? Come on now, guys, talk to me. What made you to overcome? Don't talk like I'm preaching to a teenage class. What made you to overcome that temptation? Information and fear. So what made you to enter the temptation? Information also. If you can control your mind, you can defeat the devil. That's the basis of my message. I'll get there in like part six. That's what the devil does. So here is a Christian and the devil plus pastors. Yes, plus pastors. Because the devil uses pastors too. Like the devil used Peter to tell Jesus not to go to the cross. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. Peter covering for Satan. Because you know what Paul says? He says he transforms himself into an angel of light. That the very elect are deceived. See that word again? Deceived. So the devil is not powerful. He deceives. And that is why people live in sin. Sin is deception. You know, you realize why you know sin is deception? When you become born again, you now ask yourself, why was I living like this? So what was there? Devil will just deceive you that, ah, drinking is enjoyment. Drinking is enjoyment. You will not take care of your children. You will not pay school fees. You will just sit in the beer parlor. What can a man do? Bring two bottles. What can a man do? Bring three bottles. What can a man do? Bring four bottles. You are deceived. You are just deceived. Because I'm going to go there. Maybe one of the parts. What you don't like, the devil cannot use to tempt you. I mean, I thank God for those of you who have history, but I've never tasted alcohol in my life. I don't know how it tastes. I've never had the privilege to taste, and there is no need to taste. If I when you give me wine, I check the percentage of alcohol. Now, you know that the devil can't tempt you with drinking. He can't. But you know, if you were somebody who used to drink a lot, that when some people were drinking, they called you. Like, where you day? Say, see bottles now. Now let you the miss then. You just just show up. Say, hey, hey, when you are coming, they'll hey, you. Say, give him four first to start with. You know, laugh. <laughs> you know that even when you become born again, when you are passing through beer palo, something will be doing you branch. Branch. <laughs> Do you understand that? Why? It's because that's something you like. So James tells us that every man who is tempted is drawn away by his own lust. What does that mean? If I can control my lust, I can control temptation. The devil will, listen to me, listen to me, don't forget it. The devil will never make you do anything that you don't want to do. He doesn't have the power. He's been defeated. So you know how the devil gets you? He spends years working on your mind. This woman is not good. This woman is not good. See that woman across that street? That's the right size for you. How can you hold your wife? You will not know that you are holding somebody. You, you know, yeah, and you're just there. And you're just there. After a while, I said, it's true. It's true. And unfortunately for the poor woman, she now went to lose weight. Ah, uh, are you in, 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 in her mind? She's thinking the more she loses weight, the more she will please you. Let me tell you the, the truth. All those things will never solve adultery. Adultery is a stain of the mind. Lose weight, add weight, gain weight. If you are a fool, you are a fool. That's what Proverbs said. Because sometimes when you bring people that certain people cheated with and you put them before their wives, you will ask yourself, so what are you looking for? You now realize that the man was not looking for anything external. His mind has been convinced already. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I'm summarizing the message in case you don't come back to church. So you, you, you have the full message. But that's the thing. So
So it's about deception. So you realize that the full armor of God, everything that God was talking about that armor was truth. Righteousness, sword of the spirit, pray. God wasn't saying go and fight the devil. He was just saying, listen, stay prayerful. Put the word of God in you. Constantly have the gospel in your mind. Think of your redemption. And if you live that life, you will be able to overcome the devil. And you realize there's no weapon for the back. So God was not expecting us to run from the devil. Hey Amen. Devil just did push you, pussy, push you, pussy, push you, pussy. Wait. No, you shouldn't run. That's why there's no provision for the back. Glory to God. Okay. Can we do one more? Yeah. Let's do one more. <laughs> Another scripture pop- popularly used to, to make the devil look powerful is when he says we are not ignorant of his devices. Let me explain it. It has nothing to do with the enemy. What he was just talking about, in summary, is about a brother who had committed sexual immorality and the church was punishing him. And Paul says, restore him on time. Because if you don't, he will be sorrowful unto wickedness. It's like the church suspends you and you're like, oh, they have suspended me. So what use? And goes into sinning. He says, if we don't restore him, we will, the devil will take advantage of our acting to him in self-righteousness and get him. And then, we're ignorant of his devices. It has nothing to do with you. Except you are somebody who has been suspended. So let's go to 2 Corinthians 2. Are we still here? Yes, sir. Maybe we should call this series Unmasking the Devil, right? Yes. Yeah, Shay, let's change the name. No. Okay, leave it like How to Overcome the Devil, a.k.a. Unmasking the Devil. That's good. That's good. Where did I say you should go to now? Okay, okay, glory to God. Are you still here? Say amen if you're here. Can you observe that as we're just teaching the word, the fear of the devil is just living your life? You're just like, wow. 7 Corinthians 11. We don't even need to interpret this verse, right? It's just for us to read. That's the problem. We don't read a lot of... I was at the Catholic church on Thursday, right? Thursday. Yeah, Thursday, Friday. I was in the Catholic church. I enjoyed that scripture reading they do. Just read the Bible. That's what I enjoyed a lot. Man, and I'm trying to lose some weight. Because we're kneeling, standing, kneeling, standing. And the funny thing ah, is, you know, it's not good to be ignorant in life. You know, as bold as I am here, I was not bold in the Catholic Church. Because when people were kneeling, that's when I was standing. When I now realized that everybody was, was kneeling, before I knelt down, they had stood up. <laughs> so at a point, I just took a position. I was in between standing and kneeling. And then they would say something, everybody would respond. Before I learned it, they have moved to another. I'm like, whoa. Ah, man, you guys are enjoying in Pentecostal churches. But we're going to be doing reading. I'll just do first reading. And I mean, it was good. I enjoyed it because they just read a whole chapter. It was just a blessing to just hear the word being read. But you know what we do in charismatic churches? Right? You know, our church is charismatic, but it's charismatic orthodox. We have orthodox teaching are charismatic. <laughs> but you know what? We just pick one verse. Do not be, we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. Part one. That's your compound that you are staying. Don't be ignorant. And God will just be wondering, like, who sent these people? Like, both the preacher and the members. And you are saying, Amen. Ah, I will not be ignorant, God. Ah, ah, thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Papa. You know what you're going to do? You're going to go home now, hate everybody in that compound. You know how much hatred we leave church with? I just see the woman sweeping. Say, yes, I observe. I'm not ignorant. That sweeping. That sweeping. Mm. <laughs> hey, they think they will get me in this company. It's a lie. Papa has told us. We are not ignorant. You just create unnecessary enemies. Then the day you are in trouble, you call for people they don't come. Say, didn't I tell you? They, they don't like my success in this company. What is the success? You have one bicycle that the pedal is missing. <laughs> okay. Nice. <this> is. <laughs> Let's read this. <laughs> are we there? Say, oh, just... <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't worry, I'll stop here. Final closing before the main one. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. Look at this. But I'm determined this for your own sake, that I will not come to you in sorrow again. For if I cause you sorrow, who then makes me glad? But the one whom I've made sorrowful. This is the very thing I wrote you, so that when I come, when I, when I came, I will not have sorrow for those who ought to make me rejoice. Having confidence in you, 
all that my joy will be the joy of you all. Verse 4. Please follow this carefully. Now we're reading. For out of the affliction, of much affliction and anguish of heart, I wrote to you with many tears. Not so that you will be made sorrowful, but you might know the love which I have especially for you. Verse 5. But if any has caused sorrow, he has caused sorrow not to me, but in some degree, in order not to say too much to all of you. Verse 6. Sufficient, sufficient for such a one is this punishment which was inflicted by the majority. You know, because the Corinthian church, I want to say this, I want to say this, just bear with me, give me a few minutes. I want to say this. The Corinthian church was the most gifted church. They had all the gifts of the spirit. They spoke in tongues. But it was also the church where a man slept with his father's wife. What does that tell us? Gifts doesn't change your character. By their fruits you shall know them. You can speak in tongues and commit fornication and even speak in tongues after to seal it. And you won't feel anything. Why? It happened in the Corinthian church. So what happened in those days is not like now where everybody is on their own. You know, if they suspend you in any church now, you run to another church. Yeah. I think, well, let me leave that. So the whole church gathered and said, listen, we're going to suspend this brother. It used to happen way back. I think in churches, like they suspended you, then they kept you at the back. In some churches, they even refuse the offering. I just say, everybody will know that they are suspended. Is but you, they suspend. There is a bench they used to put. <laughs> okay, so that was what happened. The whole church suspended the guy. So look at what it says. Wherefore, look at this. I urge you to reaffirm your love for him. Paul is saying, listen, the guy has caused us sorrow. We know he has sinned. And this is where the church needs to be careful. Even though we want to um, like handle people with their fault. We also reach out to them with love. Are, are you following? There's got to be that balance. Okay, now look at this. It says, Wherefore I urge you to reaffirm your love for him. Verse 9, For to this end also I wrote to you, so that I might put you to test whether you are obedient in all things. Verse 10, For one whom you forgive anything, I forgive also. For indeed, what I have forgiven, if I have forgiven anything, I did it for your sake in the presence of Christ, so that no advantage will be taken of us by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his schemes. Give me the amplified version if you have it. What is he trying to say? He said, listen, we've suspended this brother. You have obeyed me. The punishment is okay. Go and reaffirm your love to him so that Satan will not take advantage of us. That's it, that's it. To keep Satan from getting the advantage over us, for we are not ignorant of his wiles and intentions. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Quickly, quickly. What are the intentions of Satan here? We can find it in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Come on, come on, come on. Let's do this. Good, good, good. Amplified. Brethren, if any person is overtaken in a misconduct or sin of any sort, you who are spiritual who are responsive to and controlled by the Spirit, should set him right and restore and reinstate him. Look at this. Look at the advantage of Satan now. Without any sense of superiority and without gentleness, keeping an attentive eye on yourself, lest you should also be tempted. New American Standard Version. Brethren, if anyone is caught in any trespass, and you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Each one look into yourself so that you too will not be tempted. Verse 2. Bear one another's burdens and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. Verse 3. Amplified version. Verse 3. Amplified version. Verse 3. Amplified version. For if any person thinks himself to be somebody too important to condescend to shoulder another's load when he's nobody or superiority except in his own estimation. Look at this. He deceives and deludes and shits himself. So what was Paul saying in 2 Corinthians chapter 2? He says if we, are rest- if we don't restore this brother and we go out with a sense of superiority, what's going to happen is we're going to act to the brother in self-righteousness and not looking at our own self knowing that we have moved from restoring the brother into pride and Satan has now taken advantage of us because we are not ignorant of his devices. What is that device there? Satan wants us to restore that brother with a sense of we are better than you and then the brother feels like I don't need to go to church anymore and you feel like yes we are the righteous one and Satan has taken advantage of all of us because the love of Christ was not at work. 
We know you've been blessed by this telecast. To become a partner, please call plus 234-805-888-7575. Pastor Maxwell's messages are available in over a dozen books and a thousand audio and video formats. To purchase this title and other titles by Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, please call plus 234-805-888-7575 or send us an email, office at pastormax.ng. Also available are free downloads from www.thepastormax.ng. God bless you.